Um, just thought I'd shoot another quick video, um, just about a subject that really came to mind over the weekend. Um, I did a video like this probably about six months ago, but it just it becomes more and more and more relevant. Um, I don't know about you, but at the weekend where I was, it was a pretty rubbish weekend. It was windy and it was raining. Um, you know, the kids can't go outside. I've got four young kids, so the youngest one's only five up to uh, 12, so they didn't want to go outside. So it was mayhem at my house, as you can imagine. It was very loud and noisy with the kids running around. I even had some friends come around. Um, so, you know, in years gone by, I thought I would have gone and uh, got them a video from the video shop, you know, a DVD or a Blu-ray or something like that. But um, where I live now, there's, there's, no, there's no DVD shops. Absolutely none whatsoever. And, um, you know, you think it wasn't that long ago when there was the likes of Blockbuster Video and United Video and uh, what was the other one? Video Easy, which was the local one here. When, you know, I, was a, I was a member of Video Easy for, um, you know, probably close to 15 years. We hired hundreds and hundreds, if not probably thousands of, uh, of DV videos and DVDs and games and all sorts from those guys over the years. But they just don't exist anymore. Um, so, you know, what I did was, well, I got the kids a few things. I went onto, onto Netflix and uh, I got them a movie there to watch. And then after they'd watched that, I was, you know, they were bugging me. Can we watch another one? Can we watch another one? So, you know, I went on to, um, actually had a look at Lightbox, but there was nothing there. And then I went and had a look at um, it's Google Play movies and just, for, you know, for $5, got them a new release video, to, you know, a movie to watch. And I kept them quiet for a few hours. And it just got me thinking, and you know, about the video I did a little while ago, was about keeping your business relevant in, in to, with today's technology. And technology changes ever so quickly. Um, I don't know if, if you know, but um, Netflix started off as a, um, as a DVD delivery business by the mail. You know, here in New Zealand we had uh, something called Fatso. I don't even know if Fatso still exists. Similar kind of thing, you know, you could... you. You looked online or through their catalogue and you chose some videos and they mailed them out to you, you watched them and you mailed them back. Um, it seems quite uh, archaic when you think about it really, but that's, that's kind of how Netflix started. But Netflix evolved and developed with technology and the technology of the internet. And, um, and it changed its business model and really the internet and Netflix um, has been the major player in the demise of the local DVD shop. You know, so there's no more uh, United Video, there's no more Blockbusters, there's no more, um, you know, independent video stores. There used to even be videos in stores in vans, they used to drive around and deliver them. <clears throat> They've all gone. So an entire industry pretty much has been obliterated and that industry was worth, you know, hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars here in New Zealand and around the world, you know, multiple billions of dollars. That's just disappeared, you know. Not overnight, it took a number of years, but it just it's just gone. And it's also affecting uh, more other more traditional delivery methods for, for TV. Think about Sky TV. It's using satellites, you know, expensive satellites to beam, um, you know, movies from one place to the next. Even that is, uh, is disappearing. And, and also traditional TV models that rely on advertising. You know, they're dying as well. The revenue is declining dramatically because, you know, Advertisers don't want to advertise on TV anymore because it's expensive and it's an outmoded way of advertising and um, purely because you can fast forward adverts on traditional TV channels but with the likes of Netflix and Lightbox and Neon and all the other services and um, you don't, you know, a lot of people, particularly younger people, don't, um, don't watch TV in the traditional way anymore. You know, they, um, they sort of Netflix binge on, on series and all kinds of things. So. Entire industries have been changed by the internet. And I look at my business and, and what I've done, and, uh, and 10 years ago, not even, not even 10 years ago, sort of eight, eight or nine years ago, you know, when, when Facebook was becoming more prevalent in industry, I was actually quite anti-Facebook. I used it, so I was actually a, a user of it, but I was anti, anti it from a business perspective. What I mean there is I didn't think uh, at that time that, uh, that consumers would like and follow, you know, the kind of business that I was in then, which was the trade-based franchising business. I thought, you know, well, who on earth is going to sort of like and follow and, and look at adverts and things for, um, you know, for, for trade-based businesses and for home services? I just didn't think it was, it was a real thing. Um, 
that's totally flipped on its head. Um, and now I'm an absolute advocate for Facebook and Facebook advertising. By the time I sold the, the program franchising business, we were generating uh, around about 12,000 job leads um, every year. And uh, a huge percentage of those came from Facebook and online. It's where people are looking. You know, we built relationships with people on Facebook, we advertised online, you know, Google AdWords and lots of other, other online you know, portals. But the vast majority of those 12,000 job leads, and you, know, you think about it, each job lead for us was a value of around about $1,000. You know, there's millions and millions of dollars worth of business being generated online and, by, and through Facebook. And we wouldn't have captured those, that business and those leads if we hadn't been willing to adapt our business. You know, from me going, bah, Facebook, a lot of rubbish. You know, nobody's going nobody's gonna to want their, their tradesperson on Facebook to changing focus and looking at it. And then all of a sudden realizing, hey, look, yes, people, people will use Facebook and online to, to, to find their, um, their service providers. And, um, and we changed our focus. So think about the business that you're in right now. How do you generate your customers? How did you generate the, your customers? And how will you generate your customers in the future? And how can you use um, Facebook and online advertising and other new methods of advertising and lead generation and customer generation and nurturing your customers in a way that when they're ready to buy, they think of you? And not just from a, um, a consumer or business to business perspective, think about if you're going to be in franchising or you now are in franchising, how are you generating your franchise leads? Because if you're still using newspapers and you're still using magazines and, and you know, some of the offline methods for generating franchise leads, well, you're a dinosaur, to be honest. Um, you know, they still have their place, but this place is shrinking smaller and smaller and smaller every single year and every single month. People are online. They're looking online. If you want anything, you go online. Google's the first place you go to, and you need to be there when your potential when your potential franchisees are looking. So that's things like using Google AdWords, using Facebook in particular, and other uh, social media and online strategies. If you're not using those, um, you know you, you're probably throwing most of your lead generation money away. Um, Hey, look, that's all I really wanted to say. It was, it was just, it really brought it back to me again this weekend, pouring down with rain. Once upon a time, I would have jumped in the car and gone to the DVD shop and hired a half a dozen DVDs, you know, for 20 bucks and brought them home for the kids to watch. Um, and what if I brought home the wrong ones? You know, these days I jumped on my phone within five minutes. They were watching a movie which they'd chosen and they got to choose, choose from hundreds of movies and Netflix ones were free. And then I jumped onto the new releases and for, you know, five dollars, with less than five dollars, they had a new release movie to watch. Um, <clears throat> easy, simple business model. Easy, simple for me as a consumer and great for the kids because they could choose. So again, your business, how is it coping with the future? Are you adaptable and changing to the new business environment? If not, you've got to change. And you've got to start. If you are, that's brilliant. But think about what the future is going to bring, you know, in the next five years or three years or even two years or, or next month what's going to be different tomorrow that was normal today you know so videos were normal now they're not so look at your business and how it works and how you find and attract customers and how you find and attract franchisees and support your franchisees and um, be adaptable to the new future that's all I wanted to say. So, hey, look, if you want to uh, find out how I can help you um, get your business into the most franchisable business it can possibly, possibly be, um, give us a call, flick us an email. I'd love to talk to you and uh, find out how we can help each other to take your business from where it is now to a wildly successful franchisable business, uh, selling franchises, supporting your franchisees. So please get in touch. Have a